just a robot. Allegories for discrimination. This has been on my mind for quite a while, and I think it's about time I do a video about it. If you have seen my videos on Gary Sue's and Mary Sue's, the format of this video is going to be kind of similar to that one. One of the oldest series that's an allegory for discrimination that I know about is the X-Men. Yes, believe it or not, the original X-Men was an allegory for the Civil Rights Movement, with Professor X representing Martin Luther King and Magneto representing Malcolm X. But nowadays, the X-Men are an allegory for the LGBT movement. And when you compare it to the Civil Rights Movement with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, to the LGBT community, the allegory starts falling apart. Who's the Malcolm X of the LGBT community? Don't get me wrong, there are a few people in the LGBT community who want straight people dead, but no one who's really all that big. But even then, before the allegory switched from the civil rights movement to the LGBT community, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. You can't really compare being black or gay to shooting lasers out of your eyes. You see, in real life, people who hate on others for their ethnicity believe that there is a biological difference between the races. I'm not here to debate if there is or isn't a biological difference, or how great that biological difference even is, but I will say this. Someone who shoots lasers out of their eyes is absolutely biologically different from most people! Statistically speaking, in the USA, Black people do commit the most crime per capita. And yes, if you see a black person, statistically speaking, there's a slightly higher chance they might take your TV. And most serial killers in the USA are white, so if you see a white guy, there's a slightly higher chance he might stab you. But if you see Cyclops, there's a guaranteed chance that he can kill you with just a look. Not saying he will kill you with just a look, just that he can. And many members of the mutant species are terrorists who have killed several people. So discriminating against them is a lot more logical and based in reality. Cause there's a chance they could kill you with just a look! So yes, giving superpowers to your fictionally discriminated group can make the fear of the people who are discriminating against them seem a lot more logical and reasonable. Now I don't know about you, but if I was hanging out with a guy who can kill me with just a look, I would be on the edge of my seat. And if I owned a store, I would probably refuse service to a guy with fire powers who could burn it down. But what about the stories that has a new race that is also an allegory for bigotry, but this species is basically on the same level of humans in terms of abilities? Like the Netflix movie, Bright. I knew I wasn't gonna like this movie, considering the director also directed Suicide Squad. <laughs> Taking a race that exists in real life and turning it into a monster might be taken the wrong way by a few people. I'm not saying that if you take a race and make it into a fantasy creature, you're racist, but I am saying other people will think you are. Also, one of the main reasons why the orcs are so hated in this world is because a really long time ago they teamed up with the Dark Lord. So if anything, the orcs should be a stand-in for German people. Because of, well, obvious reasons. We got Hitler bro. One thing I find hilarious about this movie is that in a world full of orcs and dragons, Mexicans are still somehow the scariest people. Another good example of why this trope doesn't work is Star vs. the Forces of Evil. The allegory for bigotry in Star vs. the Forces of Evil is very... muddled. Sometimes they act like there's a war going on between the monsters and the humans, and sometimes they act like the war's been over for quite a while. In the first season, they make a comparison between the monsters and the Native Americans. Mumi history is a lot like American history. Literal pilgrims find a new land, but it's inhabited, so they wipe out the native population. And in another episode, they make a comparison between monsters and black people, where a bunch of officers break up a party and arrest all the monsters, but don't arrest the non-monsters. Although it's not really clear in this world what exactly a monster is. All the monsters look different from one another, but there's a bunch of other creatures that don't look human and look quite monstrous, but they're not monsters. But the main issue with the bigotry allegory in Star vs. the Forces of Evil is the monsters act like monsters. So yes, I think they do deserve to be discriminated against. 
Although I do have to give the show credit for one thing, they do show that the monsters are bigoted against the Mumins themselves, so it does show that there's bigoted people on both sides. The last show I want to talk about where this allegory doesn't work is the new Netflix show, BNA. Man, I'm talking about Netflix a lot in this video. A lot of people have compared BNA to Beastars, and there are a few similarities, but BNA has a lot more fantastical elements. You know how at the end of Beastars, Legoshi had to fight a whole bunch of lions to save Haroi? And it kind of just came out of nowhere and really jars with the rest of the series? Well, imagine if Legoshi revealed himself at that moment to be the Ninetales Jinjuriki and started shooting lasers out of his mouth. That's kind of what BNA is like. Now in the world of BNA, which is how a dyslexic person spells DNA, humans live alongside beastmen, who are humans who can transform into furries. Now this is handled a lot better than X-Men for the most part, because a human who can transform into a rhinoceros and have the strength of a rhinoceros is still a lot less threatening than a guy who can shoot fucking lasers out of his eyes. Granted, there are a few beastmen who can shoot motherfucking lasers out of their mouth. Don't they know I'm busy spoiling myself? But they're extremely rare. Most beastmen don't know about their existence, let alone the humans. But they do everything else pretty poorly. Number one, the beastmen have a human form, so it really shouldn't be an issue for them to exist in society without being discriminated against. Now, there is a simple test that can be done that can determine if someone is a beastman or not, but it's only ever brought up once, and they don't bring up if this test is forced upon people who are suspected of being beastmen. Also, the discrimination the beastmen face is pretty over the top. I was fine with episode one, where the main character was being hunted down by a group of humans who wanted to kill her. It was a bit over the top, but I understand they needed to establish things. But, in a later episode, the main character along with the Dolphin Beastmen go to the human cities and find a group of pro-Beastmen humans. And then they nearly drown her! Maybe it was on accident, maybe it was on purpose, but the point is, even the people who support them are either trying to kill them, or don't understand their biology to the point where they can accidentally kill them. Like, what is even the real world equivalent to this? Hey guys, I'm a white guy, and I was in a really racist African country. But luckily I met a group of black guys who were pro-white. But they didn't understand that I needed sunscreen, and they locked me outside in the sun. I almost died. The early script for Zootopia also had a similar issue, where the Predators had to wear these collars that would give them a shock if they got too excited. One of the reasons why they took this out and changed the script is because there's really no real-world equivalent to this. And another issue BNA has is, just like in Star vs. the Forces of Evil, the animal people act like animal people. The littlest things set them off, and they have this condition where if they're too stressed, they hulk out and transform into a monster version of themselves. So many of the animal people are just so violent and cruel. It's almost like it's Detroit, but with furries. Just like an Aspen Hotel. But back on topic, the issue with this is, it makes the human discrimination seem legit and understandable. Now I've given examples for how the allegory for discrimination doesn't really work, but are there ways it does work? Well, the only two examples that I can think of that are close are Zootopia and Beastars. Zootopia exists in a world without humans at all, and so does Beastars. Because of this, the discrimination is a lot different from the discrimination that happens in our own world, and we look at it more through a furry lens than a human lens. Zootopia could be an allegory for racism, but you could also look at it as an allegory for sexism, with the predators being males and the prey being females. This even works better in Beastars. Personally, I don't think Beastars is supposed to be an allegory for discrimination at all, I think it's just trying to tell its own story without having a message, but one could compare the predators to males, but replace the urge to feast upon flesh with the urge to, you know, 
do non-consensual boating stuff. Because of this, the non-predators are afraid of them. Similar to how women are sometimes afraid of males for, you know, reasons. In Legoshi, the main character has to struggle with his urges almost every single day. Oh, and on top of that, these urges usually start around puberty. So what have we learned? Allegories for racism don't work, but allegories for sexism totally work. Yeah, that's the only logical conclusion I can come to. Good night, everybody. SJWs and feminazis too. We criticize reactionists in hopes they get the boot. Just the robot marches on.